What the heck is up you guys? It's your boy Ace aka Animated Heroes here back with another action figure review and as you guys can see today we're going to be taking a look at the Mafex Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse Miles Morales and I think you guys know this is a figure we've waited on for about two years now but he has finally released and I have to say that I am overly impressed with this figure. As you guys can see, my setup is a little bit different than usual. Four reasons I will explain once I start talking about the figure. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at that sexy packaging. And then, of course, we'll get right into Miles Morales. Now, for the sexy packaging, as you guys can see, they did go with the standard theme colors of the movie, which is just about everything. You have all kind of purples, blues, yellows, gray, and it looks really dope. You do have the window right there where you would normally see the figure. You got an image of Miles Morales right there, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Miles Morales, MoFix 107, Metacom Toy, nothing much going on at the top, all the legal stuff at the bottom. Super dope image of him right there, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Another one of him right here, crouching down, this is him without the soft goods, MoFX 107. Then on the back, of course, you do have some poses you can get the figure into, as well as the accessories. So as always, MoFX kills it with the packaging. Now go ahead and like and subscribe before we jump into this figure. So for any of you wondering why I had the figure already out of the package, it's because I actually recorded this entire review already. I did everything, I thought it was perfect, and for whatever reason, my sound quality was off. I don't know what happened with my microphone, but I guess the settings got tampered with at some point, maybe while I was just messing with some stuff in the area. But yeah, so I'm going to try to run through this figure review pretty quickly because I want to keep the enthusiasm, explain how good of a figure it is, but I don't want to sound bummed out about the fact that I am literally doing this entire review twice. So starting off with the figure, as you guys can see, he looks super dope now this is not how he comes in the package he comes in the package with an alternate head sculpt and his soft goods on but this is how i was posing him by the time i was done with the review so this is what you'll see but in terms of details not a whole lot going on but it's a very skinny body and i have to say that even after posing this guy around Mafex did a great job nailing it it's not a whole lot of colors you just have black red white and a few grays but I still feel like they did a very good job, especially with the spider logo. Everything's clean and fluid. Uh, some of the webs seem to be painted in this gray color. Some of them aren't, but I mean, it doesn't look bad either way. So all the way down, as you guys can see, this guy looks like he comes straight out of the movie. I know some people are saying that, ah, he's too skinny. He doesn't look accurate but he actually does like this guy literally looks the exact way he does in the movie so kudos to Mafex for putting this figure out and making it look the way it was supposed to i'm really impressed with it so let's go ahead and put him back see how tall he stands and then of course we'll get right into that articulation now as far as the height on this guy as you can see he is just a little bit over five inches short of five and a half so Definitely a very small figure, and once again, he's going to fit in perfect with all of your Spider-Man figures, be it Marvel Legends, SH Figure Arts, or even Mafex. And of course, I'll show some size comparisons a little bit later. Now for the articulation on this guy, I'm going to show him first without the soft goods, and then I'm going to show him with them. Without him, as you guys can see, he looks up very very well looks down also very well you get a whole lot of range of motion out of the neck and just the ball peg that they have the head on so good job with that the arm goes up and out about that much which i think is fine he has a really great butterfly joint so he can bring his arms all the way in and of course they can go all the way back as well so really good posability bicep swivel double jointed elbows his hands are on the typical hinge as you guys can see and you can move those about freely no problem he does have a really great diaphragm joint that works better going back the only problem is you do get this weird gap in there it doesn't go forward as much as I want to but I think it's probably due to the fact he has this really tiny body and they just couldn't wedge it in there but he does move forward a little bit more if you use the waist and of course you can do turns all at the diaphragm and of course at the waist as well now his legs are on a drop down method but make sure to be careful with these because these are much much smaller sockets and ball pegs than normal 
He kicks forward about that much, doesn't really kick back at all. He does have inner thigh swivel. He can do the splits about that much before you start to force it. He does have double jointed knees, as you guys can see. Foot goes down about that much, foot goes up that much. Of course you get ankle rocker and of course you get toe hinge. So they wedged everything into this small body just as I thought they would and it works very effective. Now, since I did go ahead and put the soft goods on him, I decided I'd just make him the way that he comes straight out of the package. And this is what you get from him. As far as the head goes, this is his default head sculpt. It looks up about the same, looks down about the same. Of course, you get all the same range. Now, what I really like is that none of this fabric hinders the articulation at all. His arm can still go up and out the same. You can still bring it all the way in as I showed, maybe hindered just a little bit, but not much at all. Of course, they still go back. As you can see, you still get all that range of motion in the arm. So that works well. As far as the foot goes or leg rather, he still kicks up very, very far. Now, he can't do the splits as much, but still, that's very, very great for Spider-Man. And then I decided to put the uh, shoes on him also because this is how he comes in the package. Now, the shoes, you don't get as much range out of these. You still get ankle rocker. Foot can still go down up a little bit better, but you don't get a toe hinge on these. And, I mean, come on. We know why they did that. Nobody want to scuff the Nikes. Well, these aren't Nikes, of course, because they don't have the logo, but nobody want to scuff the shacks. He want to keep these in mint condition, so that's why there's not a toe hinge. Y'all get it. Now, just like any Spider-Man figure, you do get a ton of accessories with this guy. First off, you get a unmasked head sculpt, which looks really nice. You get the soft goods, of course, the jacket, which also looks dope, and the pants, as well as the shacks that you guys see he has on. Now, when it comes to hands, you get a ton. You get a pair of reaching type hands. These aren't specifically for wall crawling, and I'll show you why. You do get a separate pair of hands for wall crawling. And if you look at these, you can see that the fingers are kind of curved, and that lets you know that these are actually for wall crawling. You get a pair of relaxed hands as well. All of these are very small, so be careful with these. If you drop them on carpet, it's over. Uh, you get a pair of web holding hands, and I'll show what these are for in just a sec. You get a pair of thwipping hands, and then you get a pair of mask holding hands. And these are awesome because the difference between these and the other Spider-Man figures they release, when you have the mask in hand, and you see there's a little port right there in the middle, and there's a hole at the very top of the mask, and you just kind of slide that in there, and then he holds on to that no problem. As you guys can see, it's not coming out of there. So that's awesome. You do get a pair of feet. These are for when he's fully costumed. Of course, they do have the magnets at the bottom. You do get a regular pair without them. As you can see, he has the shacks on. You also get a pair of shacks with the magnets. No surprise there. Um, I almost forgot these, but you do get a pair of uh, magnetized hands as well. I just had these together so that I could keep up with them. But you get those. Um, you do get several different webs. You get two smaller shooting webs and all these you just attach around the wrist. You get two longer webs and then you do get one web for him to hold as well. So this can be for whenever he's web swinging. Now in terms of the necks, you also get a separate neck. This is the one that he comes with in the package. This is one where you can tell he has his mask off. Um, I'm probably going to keep it on the one that's fully covered just because the pegs are so small, I don't want to part swap with this guy too much when I don't have to. But in terms of head sculpts, of course, you get one masked head. This is a more serious look. And then you get one where he's kind of shocked or just a standard mask, whichever you want to use it for. Both of these look really great. And lastly, probably the best one they could have added is this. You get an unmasked head, but also, well, slightly unmasked. You do have the mask at the top, which is still sculpted in detail very well. So good job to Mafex for this one. They did great on these accessories. I love it. Now for some size comparisons, here he is standing next to a few releases from Mafex. First off, we have the classic comic book version. Then next to him, we do have the Big Bro Maz Morales. It's super dope to see the differences between the two of these. And then lastly, we do have the Spider-Man Homecoming 2.0 version. And I think he fits in very well with all of these.
Next up here, he is standing next to the retro Spider-Man from the Amazing Spider-Man Wave. We have the Spider-Man Nior or Nior. I don't know how you say it, but I hear people say it differently. And then lastly, you have my favorite out of all my Spider-Man figures, the SH Figure Arts Supaidaman. And then lastly, for a few extras, we have the SH Figure Arts Civil War Black Panther with the T Chaka slash Chadwick Bozeman head sculpt that I got customized to fit on this body. RIP Chadwick Bozeman. We have the Mafex Classic Comic Book Carnage. And then I believe this is the Marvel Legends Velocity Suit Spider Man from the PS4 game. So it turns out doing this review again wasn't as bad as I thought it was. I was literally dreading this, but. I love this figure so much that I actually enjoyed reviewing it again and I had a much better idea of the figure after posing it around and taking a bunch of photos before I went straight back to doing the review again. And so even though my thoughts are the same by this figure, I have to say I, I really did enjoy doing this review again. So that being said, I know a lot of people probably decided to pass on this pre-order after they saw the Sentinel version. A lot of people are contemplating whether they should get that one, whether they should get this one. I want to be honest with you. Sometimes it's it's great to be the best of both worlds. There is nothing wrong with having both of these figures. Now, of course, if it goes against your spending limit, you can still buy this one, hold on to it. And then if the Sentinel one comes out and you like that one better, by all means, you can sell this one. But if this is a figure that you're contemplating getting, I highly recommend picking it up now. This figure is ridiculously priced, and that's one of the only things I really don't like about it. This figure, I paid $97 for this guy. Now, granted, I think about $20, 26 27 was complete shipping, but still, this, this guy is a ridiculously priced figure, and I'm seeing him online for $130, $140, all that. Uh, so if you want this guy, pick him up, play with it, hold on to it. If you like the Sentinel, of course, sell it. But this is not a figure I recommend waiting on. This happens with Mafex a lot. Once their figures release, you're not going to get them for retail at all anymore. So that being said, this guy's awesome. I'm just going to be straight up. This guy is completely awesome. Everything I was worried about, they did right. From the articulation to the design to even the soft goods. They don't hinder the figure. And at the same time, they look great, in my opinion. I know some people think that they look a little bland, but for this being Mafex's first time attempting something like this, I feel like they executed it perfectly. This was worth the two-year wait, and I would much rather wait and get a good figure than be impatient and get something bad. We all know what happened with Cyberpunk if you're a gamer. But off of that, this is my review. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That always helps me out. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And make sure to hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload new content. Lastly, follow me on everything you see listed in the description below to keep up with my activity outside of YouTube. You guys have a great new year and stay safe. Peace.